guys, I'm Jaden Dupree and today I'm going to show you how to make your pick shots using the diamond system and the spot on the wall. Now the diamond system is for one rail kicks and the spot on the wall is for three rail kicks. So, we're going to go ahead and start with the basic layout of the diamond system. So this is zero. Whatever pocket we're kicking towards is zero. Diamond up is 10, diamond up is 20, diamond up is 30, back of the pocket is 40, Diamond up is 50, diamond up is 60, diamond up is 70, back pocket's 80. Now, however it is on this side, it's exactly mirrored on the other side. So this is zero, that's zero. 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, 40, 50, 50, 60, 60, 70, 70, 80, 80. Now, it's not laid out like that 100% of the time because we're not always kicking towards that left corner pocket. So let's say we're kicking like that. Now, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. You don't have to go all the way up to 80, uh, but that is the layout of the diamond system, just like that. So there's two things you have to identify when you are using the diamond system. One, where is my contact point? We can use our contact point here as 0, because we can contact it as if we're going into the pocket. Zero will always bring you into the pocket. We can contact it as if we're going into the pocket, but we're gonna most likely scratch. Uh, so it really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna try to show you it. Uh, but our cue ball is directly in line with this second diamond, but it is not on 20. This cue ball is not on 20, because if you look at the path from 10 to the diamond, our cue ball is way to the right of it. So if our cue ball is actually on the track of the path between the first and second diamond, then it is on 20. It'll always be a little bit closer to the object ball we're kicking towards uh, when it's actually on like a solid diamond track. So it's, if we just aim, I didn't tell you this yet, but this is important. This is the most important part of the whole thing. If your cue ball is at 20, you divide 20 by 2. And that's how you get your aiming point on this rail. So we get 10. But if we just hit straight 10, we're gonna come up short. Because the diamond system requires a little bit of running English, as does really every kicking system. Every kicking system will, I think, everyone that I know of requires you to put a little bit of running English on your cue ball. So a little bit of left spin on this cue ball Aiming at 10, I didn't put any. There we go. Aiming at 10, bring you straight to your contact point. I didn't put quite enough there. Uh, but you really have to figure out how much to put based on the table that you're on. You really have to just try it out in your table. So now our cue ball is on the 30 track. Our aim is still zero. We're going to hit 15 and make that ball. Now, what if our ball is here? This ball is on 10. Our cue ball is on 20. There's a blocker. We just need to hit it. How do we hit that? So you take 10, add it to 20, that gives you 30. You divide that by 2, now you have 15. You hit 15 with a little bit of that running English, and there you got the contact on the ball. It's that simple. Now, if you're way down here, let's say we're at 70. If you just hit 35 with running English, bam, you make it. So it works all the way down the table. Sometimes at 80, say we're at 80, we have to hit 40. 40 is the back of this pocket, so it can go a little bit of that point. Just like that, but I hit it completely wrong. 80 is the hardest one to hit. If we're at 80, this is a harder ball to hit. Generally, if we're at 80, our contact point is blocked, so we're gonna have to add some more running English. So we're going to have to spin that ball a lot more. 
So I'd say it works reliably up to 70. Then once you get to 80, it's just kind of all your adjustments coming into play. But from one to 70, it's good. Uh, I would say one to probably 75, it's good. And so we're blocked by that side pocket we should be perfectly fine to just maintain the same amount of spin and the same speed. Uh, you need to know how speed affects the cue ball's path on the rail though. So if you haven't seen my video on that, you can go and check that one out. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so the spot on the wall. First thing you need to do is get to the table you're playing on. Set your cue ball in the mouth of that pocket, add a little bit of running English, hit at that second diamond, see if it's on the line to scratch it. And we see it was not. So we set it up again, change our aiming point to where we think it's going to aim to scratch. Is that on the line of scratching? Came up a little short again. One more time. And that looks good. So now we have our point. It's around here. Now what you do is you try to find an object in the room that is along that point. So I see it's actually direct in line where my two walls meet. So now, wherever your cue ball is on that table, if you aim for that point, you have to pick a point that's not going to move. So if you're in a bar, you pick like a beer bottle, it's going to move. That's not a good target. Uh, but now, wherever your cue ball is on that table, if you aim at that point, that object, dead on, with that little bit of running English, it's going that same path. Just like that. I mean, when you get up here, it's not going to, but as long as you're back here, where you can successfully make a three railer into this pocket, that's where you can aim at that one point and be able to make or come close this pocket. So if you ever have to kick, and some games, three-year-old kicks don't come up, and that's okay. Some games, they do come up. Now, would it be nice to make more three-year-old kicks when they do come up? It's better to make them when they come up to just be like, oh, they're not going to come up. I'm not going to have to shoot that. But if you aim at that point, you will always come close, and if not always, make that ball. If you successfully do it, the further you go up table, the harder it's going to be. Uh, I think it once you get above the side pockets, it's a little difficult because uh, you have to kind of change your spin. You got to give yourself a bit more spin because if you just hit it plain center up here, you're going to come up way short. It's about a diamond and a half short. Uh, so we don't want to come up too, too short. So we're going to have to throw in some more English to widen out that angle. So that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button on this video. Also, share the video with your friends. Uh, if you'd like to get notifications when I upload a new video, you can click the subscribe button, then the bell icon right next to it. That'll just send you an email and a notification saying that I've uploaded a new video. Uh, thank you guys so much for 60,000 subscribers. It's more like 60,250, something like that now. Uh, so that is insanely awesome. That's incredible to come this far in a year. So I have to thank each and every one of you who watched all my videos. Uh, again, share this video with some friends. Let's try to get to 100,000 subscribers soon. Uh, that's my end goal. That's my that's my ultimate goal for this channel. 100,000 subscribers. So everyone that can help me get there uh, is definitely highly, highly appreciated. So share it with some friends. Make sure you like the video. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. We do live streams. We do raffles. We do daily videos, daily tutorials. 
uh, I'm about to start a series, uh, let me know in the comment section, comment yes or no if I should start a weekly break and run video. So like me just running through a rack, no commentary or anything, just me playing. Uh, and we'll see how high I can go. Maybe I can get a couple like four or five packs in there. Uh, so comment yes or no if I should start that little series. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.